John Beltran with Pat O'Rourke and our Major League Baseball analyst Ralph Woodlick joins us for the entire hour here on Sports Saturday. We'll run through the American League teams and our division predictions, and then we'll hit the National League teams. Ralph, let's not waste any time since you like to be extremely thorough. We'll begin with the American League East. You know, once, just once in my lifetime, I would like to say that someone else is going to win the AL East other than the Yankees. This is not the year I can do that, guys. Uh, once again, I've got to go with the Yankees. Uh, starting pitching, uh, you know, even though they've got some problems right now, they had to go to Carl Pavano to name him, who hasn't pitched, what, in uh, like two years. He's going to be the starting pitcher in opening day. However, Mike Messina at age 38 will be ready. Andy Pettit at age 34 will be back sometime. And Shen Meng Wong, who won 19 games last year, will definitely be ready, although he's opening the season on a DL. But I think this team is just loaded, guys. I mean, from top to bottom, I, you know, really. And they still have the probably the best closer in baseball. And I think we can continue to say that for a couple more years. And Mariano Rivera, he is just, just lights out. You know, they bring him in, and it's lights out. But, I mean, you take a look at this lineup. Uh, I like the big Polak at first base, Doug Mankiewicz. I hope I can say that since I am a Polish uh, extraction myself, so I can think I can call a Polish man a Polak. But anyway, uh, Jorge Posada again at catcher. I mean, this team doesn't change very much, guys. Robinson Cano, who looks really like a nice young ball player. You know, I keep on calling him young because he is one of the youngest players in an everyday lineup, but still uh, a, a very, very dependable second baseman who's provided a pretty good bat over the last year, a year and a half. A-Rod, is A-Rod going to break out of the... Uh, out of the doldrums, so to speak, and with the Yankees and lead this team on, uh, possibly contend for the AL MVP this year. Everybody's looking for a big year from A-Rod. Of course, his uh, mate next to his, to his left and Derek Jeter at shortstop, and then a healthy outfield this year of Matsui, Damon, and Abreu. I mean, this this team is loaded, guys. I mean, truly is loaded, regardless of what the Boston Red Sox have done. And we'll get into that in a second. I've got, I've got the Boston Red Sox pick, uh, in second in this division. No great surprise. But I think the Yankees are going to win this thing, guys. Going into uh, the Boston Red Sox, if you don't mind, uh, Dice Matt, Datsui Matsuzaka, I guess, $103 million expenditure of uh, the, uh, the Red Sox this year. Uh, Theo Epstein uh, apparently got the key to the vault uh, through a couple of sacks of um, Bills and flew over to Japan, and uh, here we go. They've got a new ace, so to speak, and obviously the baseball world is going to be watching every single pitch that this man throws. A lot of pressure on him, but so far it seems that he's been able to uh, kind of joke, laugh it off, and uh, do a pretty good job in spring training. Uh, Kurt Schilling, obviously, uh, number two in the, in the uh, rotation behind Ice Matt. Josh Beckett. Will this guy ever put a, a, a full year together? Will he ever live up to his expectations? Uh, he is the number three in rotation. Tim Wakefield, who had a bad year last year, guys. You take a look at his numbers. Had a bad year last year. Uh, he's, he's back again throwing the knuckleball. Number four in rotation. And Julian Tavares has assumed the role as a number five starter. So we're going to have to see how all of this shakes out with regards to uh, the Boston Red Sox. But as it stands right now, with Jonathan Papelbon now going from the number three or four starter in the rotation to the closing role, this team is going to be a solid ball club with regards to pitching. Everyday lineup, obviously getting older. Jason Veritek, how many more crouches can this guy get into, gentlemen? I mean, this guy's been co catching now, it seems like, for 20 years. I'm exaggerating, of course, but he has slowed down quite a bit. He'll give him, I think, a real good start of the season, and I think you're going to start seeing some wear and tear on him. Uh, Kevin Euclid at first base. Had a nice year last year. Dustin Pedroia, a kid out of, uh, I believe, Arizona State, a rookie, uh, looking pretty good uh, as their second baseman. Obviously, they're going to have to have something over there. Someone's got to play that position. They may as well give it to him. They seem to be pretty high on him. Mike Lowell, who uh, the Red Sox are trying to give uh, to the uh, Rockies uh, in exchange uh, this year for Jason Jennings, obviously is the third baseman until such time as they find another home for him. Julio Lugo, <laughs> another guy that I uh, keep on bringing his name up, a very underrated ball player. He's going to help them big time. Uh, at shortstop, uh, J.D. Drew, uh, can he stay healthy in right field? Question. Coco Chris, is he healthy this year? He was not last year at the start of the uh, season. And we've got to love Manny Ramirez and left and followed by Big Pappy. Maybe this year he gets the MVP, guys, at DH. A solid team, no doubt about it. I vacillated a little bit in uh, determining, in my prediction, uh, who's going to be one, who's going to be two in that division. 
I like the Yankees one, Boston two. Toronto, a team that's loaded in some respects, a very nice uh, everyday lineup. Uh, I like Royce Clayton fitting in at shortstop with that team. He's just he's just an excellent shortstop, excellent defensive ball player, and he gives him enough offense on occasion. Uh, Vernon Wells, he of a big contract. Frank Thomas, boy, I'll tell you, this guy, is, I'd like to be uh, a baggage handler carrying Frank Thomas's bags. This guy moves every year, and you know he carries an awful lot of stuff, the big skirt. Anyway, he's at the DH, and uh, if he's healthy, he doesn't open the season healthy, but if he's healthy, he can help this team. A.J. Burnett, another one of these uh, former Florida Marlins, as Josh Beckett. Uh, again, another guy with a tremendous amount of ability. Uh, can he put it all together? Uh, Gustavo Chiquin, the left-handed starter. Some problems with the police uh, recently in Florida, but it looks like he should be all right. Roy Halladay, maybe one of the finest pitchers in baseball. I don't think there's any question about that, one of the top right-handers around. And, of course, uh, anchored by the closer, B.J. Ryan, the big lefty who can throw strikes and really overpower people. I think those are the three top teams in the American League East. I, you know, when you take a look, I guess we can talk a little bit about uh, about Baltimore. Leo Mazzoni has not done a whole lot in that pitching with that pitching staff. We kind of thought he was going to do uh, a major job with that team. Really, Eric Bedard, Daniel Cabrera, they are still the top uh, the top two pitchers on that roster. Jarrett Wright, Steve Traxel, been around, seen it, done it. Do they have anything left? That, those are three and four starters in their rotation, guys. So that, that's hurting a little bit, in my opinion. A nice kid to watch this year, in my opinion, on that everyday lineup, Nick Markakis. A really look, a nice-looking hitter. We'll see if he can come out. He really had banging the walls down in, in Baltimore. But I've got to like this team at four. In Tampa Bay, guys, this is a very, very poor team. I mean, there's three or four major leaguers and the rest of these guys. You just don't know. Delman Young, right field, we're going to have to watch him. Rocco Baldelli, he's already out. He's got a hammy injury. Carl Crawford, really one of the fine young ball players, but unfortunately he seems to be destined to spend the rest of his career in Tampa Bay, which is that's like going to jail. And the starting pitcher, Scott Kazmer. Now that's it. Casey Fossum, guys, we know what he's the famous for. That's pretty much it. Closer, Seth McClung. Who are these people? That's why this team is in last place in the American League East. That's why this team will finish in last place in the American League East for several years to come. <laughs> and they may never get out of last place, but uh, that's the way I look at the AL East: Yankees, Boston, Toronto, Baltimore, and Tampa Bay. Pat O'Rourke. Now that team, yeah. Go okay. ahead. Okay. One more thing, Ralph. You want to add quickly? In the Not interest really. of time. Okay. Let's go to Pat. Not then. really. <laughs> okay. Okay, Ralph. I mean, obviously, we know the Yankees and Red Sox battled out to the end every year to win that division. The Yankees usually come out on top, but uh, I'm actually going to go with the Red Sox this time around because the Red Sox have the depth in the rotation. Could have start the year you mentioned Carl Pavano starting the, or being the opening day starter for the Yankees. I really like Dice K in terms. I think the first time around in the league, he's going to be absolutely dominant. I think overall, he's going to have a nice season. Uh, Kurt Schilling, I mean, we know what he can do. Josh Beckett, I think, is going to have a nice bounce back year. I think it's in terms of last year was a little bit disappointing in terms of giving up the home run ball, but overall. It's a nice rotation with Papelbon back in the bullpen. They have some stability there. I really think John Lester is going to be a starter in that rotation instead of Julian Tavares sometime in May. Yankees have a great lineup. We know that. Rob, probably the best lineup in baseball. Robinson Cano is hitting eighth. I mean, that's all you have to say. The question, though, is the health of the pitching. And I'm still not completely sold in terms of everything they have in front of Mariano Rivera in that particular bullpen. Blue Jays, my questions are the four and five starters and the bullpen in front of B.J. Ryan. It's a really nice lineup. You know, like Vernon Wells and so forth. But I had the Blue Jays third. The Orioles fourth. I mean, I think the Orioles have you. We know Eric Bedard's established himself as an outstanding pitcher. The keys for them are, you know, do Daniel Cabrera and Adam Lowen actually step up this year and become big time stars? Because the Orioles have a decent lineup. The bullpen is a little shaky in front of Chris Ray, but those are the key are that what Leo Mazzoni can do with those two particular starters, Cabrera and Lowen. Devil Rays, of course, the last place team. They've got great future talent. They got a lot of very good guys in the minors. Some guys that are going to get playing time in the majors this year, like B.J. Upton and Delman Young, but the talent is in the future, and it's obviously not now. This is a very boring division to predict, so I'm going to stick with Ralph. I've got the Yankees first, the Red Sox second, the Blue Jays third, the Orioles fourth, and the Devil Rays fifth. Okay, Ralph, in the interest of time here, because this is the strongest division coming up, we can pick up the pace here in the American League Central. It's all yours. Thank you. American League Central, <clears throat> obviously the strongest division in baseball. I don't think there's any question about that. Let's jump right now to the Detroit Tigers. My pick for number one uh, in the AL Central. Uh, this is a very, very solid team that seems to have gotten a little bit stronger uh, over the uh, off season by, by the acquisition of not my favorite ball player, but what do I know? I mean, this guy can swing a bat, Gary Sheffield. 
They brought in Jose Mesa, who opened the season last year with the Colorado Rockies as a right-handed bridge. He's going to help in a really very strong bullpen. So this is a ball club that's very, very solid. Unfortunately, they just announced that Jamie, or Jamie, Kenny Rogers is going to be out for a couple of months, possibly, possibly, gentlemen, for most of the season because of surgery, so about the blood clot issue. So that to be a, a situation where they're going to be hurting a little bit on that starting staff when you take a look at Jeremy Bonderman, Justin Verlander, Nate Robertson, and Mike Moroth, who missed so much of the season last year, comes back into the rotation. A very, very solid team in a very, very solid division. I've got them ranked number one. Number two, guys, it's more of a heart than anything else, quite honestly. I'm looking at the White Sox. Big, big, you know, I made my decision last night after Mark Burley comes out and pitches a nice game yesterday in spring training, finally. So I'm taking the White Sox in number two. I could be so far wrong in this thing because I think this team's got some outfield problems. Aside from Jermaine Dye, they're running a 34-year-old center fielder who's got nothing but injury troubles the last five or six years, and Darren Erstad in center field. And Scott Bitsednik is still bothered by his hamstring problems surgery during the off season. This is a team that, in my opinion, has got to stay healthy. The starting team has got to stay healthy. The starting pitching staff has got to stay healthy. Javier Vasquez has got to live up to the $32 million the, Rocky, the White Sox threw at him. And Bobby Jenks has got to be healthy. But there's a nice young kid in the bullpen, Joe Thornton, who can get the job done. Guys, watch him. He is good. He is excellent. I like the White Sox second. Number three, surprising, Cleveland Indians. Uh, Josh Barfield, a nice addition. Trot Nixon, another nice addition if he's healthy. Weakest part of this team, I, I like the starting pitching in CC Sabathia and Jake Westbrook. Jeremy Sowers, eh, question mark. Closer Joe Borowski. Wow, has he fallen? Well, not really. He's going up. Cubs, Marlins, and now the Cleveland Indians. So, in a sense, he's made a, he's made a, he's made a, a plus step up on a ladder, so to speak. But with Grady Sizemore, one of my favorite ball players, you know I was going to get that in. Uh, John, but Grady Sizemore leading off in center field. This is a solid ball club. Unfortunately, they're playing in a very, very tough division. I've got them three. Minnesota Twins, I've got four. You know, quite a surprise, obviously. Can Joe Maurer repeat his 347 batting average? Can Justin Moreau, uh, Morneau, the, uh, the AL MVP again this year, close to it at 321? But you've got to take a look at some of the other. Uh, Rondell White, 246 in the outfield. Come on, guys. I mean, Rondell White, your starting left fielder. That, I think that, that hurts. Sidney Ponson, your number five starter, that might be really a bad, bad situation. Booth Bonds, your number three. Who are they missing? Brad Radke, out, obviously, retired. Francisco Lariano, out for the season. What a disaster that is. Solid bullpen. Joe Nathan, 123 saves in the last three years. One of the top closers in baseball. Unfortunately, he toils in anonymity. I love to say that. Anyway, I, I've got Minnesota four. Kansas City, it's going to be a fun team to watch, guys. They're going to score runs with Ryan Sheely, Alex Gordon, Mark Tehan, Mike, uh, Mike Sweeney, if he's healthy. This team can score some runs. Reggie Sanders, again, another guy with a, uh, with a suitcase with uh, all sorts of stickers throughout his major league career, been all over the place. A very weak starting pitching staff. Joe Mesh, Zach Reinke, anybody else, forget it. Closer, Octavio Dotel, if he's healthy. That's my uh, situation. Detroit, Chicago. Cleveland, Minnesota, Kansas City, AL Central. Okay, Pat. Okay, we can all be a little bit different on this one, but I'm actually going to go with the Cleveland Indians to win the American League Central this year. I know the bullpen is a little suspect with Joe Borowski at the end. I think the key for Cleveland is how guys like Raphael Betancourt and uh, Fernando Cabrera step up this year because Betancourt was okay last year, but Cabrera had an awful year, and this is a guy that was being highly touted throughout his minor league career. It's the key is how those guys step up, but I really like Jeremy Sowers, the guy, and I'm sure a lot of people noticed, but he had the second best ERA in the American League after the All-Star break last year, second only to Yohan and Santana, so they've got some stability in that rotation. They've got some depth, and they have the option when Cliff Lee comes back to maybe move one of those starters to the bullpen, because overall, the rotation's pretty good with Sabathia, Westbrook, Sowers, you know, Carmona, and Paul Bird. Pretty good rotation in Cleveland. Also got to like the lineup with the Tribe. I think Johnny Peralta had a really nice year two years ago. Bad year last year. I think he really bounces back this year. Travis Hafner, Victor Martinez, of course, in the middle of that particular lineup makes it very... Uh, formidable. Acquiring Barfield from San Diego, also a very good move for Cleveland. And Casey Blake's an underrated player. And Grady Sizemore, Ralph, I know one of your favorite players as well. Don't have to say too much about him. He's a guy that has all the tools. I like Cleveland winning that division. The Tigers I have second. Um, one thing that concerns me a little bit about Detroit is the same thing that what happened to maybe the White Sox last year. Starters got a lot of innings last year. I wonder how they bounced back because it didn't work out well last year for the White Sox when those starters got a lot of innings on their World Series run the year before. So that's what concerns me about 
about Detroit. Do like the Gary Sheffield acquisition. They needed to add that lineup. Some keys for Detroit. I look at Marcus Timms, Craig Monroe, and Curtis Granderson. They all hit an average pretty bad, 255 to 260 wise, but they all combined for 73 homers. I like to see them bump up that average this year, and then maybe I would have bumped up the Tigers in that division. I mean, Jeremy Bonderman, a nice starter at the top. Justin Verlander, a lot of innings last year. Hadn't thrown that many in the minors. I wonder how he bounces back this year. Twins. I have in third place. It's a young, good lineup, and it's a it's a very good bullpen. The thing that concerns me about Minnesota is the overall depth in that rotation. Matt Garza's beginning the year in the minors. I'd like to see him in the rotation. You have obviously the best pitcher in baseball in Santana, but after that, there's some huge question marks. I mean, they don't have Francisco Loriano. They don't have Brad Rackey this year, and the question is also in terms of Carlos Silva. He's had a terrible spring. He had a terrible year last year. I mean, is he really going to step up? And of course, Ramon Ortiz, a guy that's never stepped up throughout the course of his career, is in that rotation for Minnesota as well. I have the White Sox fourth. I just there's a lot of questions there. I mean, they did not have a good spring, and I don't want to base too much on that. But there are some questions in terms of the overall rotation. Does Mark Burley bounce back? I'm not so sure he does. He went to so many three ball counts last season. White Sox had a rough year last year, and they still had a career year from Jermaine Die. I mean, this is a lineup that really needs Die to contribute. Even though you have the likes of Tommy and Conerco, they need Die to have a big year again. And still, I'm not so sure it's going to be enough for the White Sox, although I like their team. It's just a great division. It's just, when they, You can pick them for fourth. The Royals have nice future talent in Mark Tehan and Zach Granke and Alex Gordon, but obviously there's not enough to finish in the top four in this division. Okay, I do have the Royals fifth, no doubt about it, and I also have the White Sox fourth. I'm not crazy about their pitching. I think it's declined in the last couple of years even though the lineup looks pretty good, but there are some veterans there, and I'm not sure if they're just veterans or they're getting old like a Darren Erstad, even a Jim Tomey. In third place, I do have the Cleveland Indians. I wanted to elevate them a little bit more. I was intrigued a little bit by you know uh, Josh Barfield and you know some of the offseason pickups, but uh, I'm not crazy about Eric Wedge as a manager. The rotation, you know, Cliff Lee is not going to be pitching for a little while, and I still have questions about the bullpen. I have the Detroit Tigers second. Uh, they're still a solid team, even without Kenny Rogers. And believe it or not, even though and there's no question about it, there is a lack of depth with the starting rotation. I'm taking the Minnesota Twins first. The bottom line is this: this is the team in the division, along with the Tigers. If they have a lead after six innings, they're going to win baseball games. They don't need pitchers to go seven innings. They might not even need pitchers to go six innings. The bullpen is so strong for Minnesota, and even though we all had them finishing third or fourth last year, they certainly bucked those odds. I think they can do it this year. I do agree with Ralph. Uh, Rondell White is your starting left fielder. Doesn't look good, but I take pitching over hitting. Santana's almost an automatic victory every time out. I know he's only one pitcher, but I'm taking Minnesota because this team has won the division virtually each and every year, including last Last year when they weren't supposed to finish in the top two or three. Okay, Ralph, let's move over to the American League West. I'm going to surprise you guys, quite honestly. Actually, most of the experts are picking the LAA of A. I'm not, I'm not going that way. I'm going with Oakland. I, I like Oakland. I, I like them. I, I saw them quite frequently, obviously, in spring training, as you all know, with all our, our reports out of there. I like the addition of uh, Mike Piazza at DH. I like uh, Alan Embry coming in as a left-handed uh, closer or left-handed bridge to uh, Houston Street to closer. Obviously, when you lose Barry Zito, we're going to get into him, obviously, when you go to the NL West. When you lose Frank Thomas with a heck of a year, Jay Payton, they've lost something. And obviously, they lost their manager in Ken Maka. However, they've got a manager right now in Bob Guerin who the players like. The players are going to respond to him. I think they're going to respond to him much, much closer and much better than they did to Ken Maka. And we know how they did with Ken Maka. He won a division last year. Rich Harden. The key, obviously, guys. If there's any one player so far throughout the two, two uh, divisions that we've pr uh, projected already with the AL East and AL Central, I think there's one player right now that almost, in my opinion, is the secret to this team's success or failure. Rich Harden. He seems to be healthy in spring training, recording K after K after K. Did it again a couple days ago. Uh, he's he's the top of that staff, obviously. Danny Heron, Esteban Loiza, Joe Blanton, Joe Kennedy came out, did a very nice job. As a starter the other day, five solid innings, I believe one hit. I think it's a decent starting staff. The uh, the bullpen, Houston Street, Justin uh, Dusherer, Kiki Calero, Alan Embry, as I mentioned earlier, pretty solid bullpen. And the everyday lineup is quite solid. Shannon Stewart is a nice left fielder for this team, not bad. Mark Kotze, they're going to miss him, but Steve Swish will be out there in right field. He can get the job done, in my opinion. Uh, Dan Johnson, if he's healthy, would play a little first base. That will help, obviously. And Jason Kendall at the top of the lineup, very, very strange to find a catcher to lead off. I like them, number one. Uh, the Angels, number two. I've got a question. Can Gary Matthews Jr., who paid all that money, guys, 
can he get over this uh, human growth hormone controversy? You got to wonder about this. He's uh, the last year, biggest year of his career. Last year with the Texas Rangers, signed for the multi-million dollars with the Angels, and then he comes up with the HGH problem. Big question mark. Garrett Anderson, a key to this lineup every day, hurting a little bit, guys. I told me I, I saw him limping the other day. His feet are giving him problems uh, he, again. Uh, if he doesn't play, if he can't be 100%, that's going to be hurting. Vladimir Guerrero, gentlemen, is slowing down at last. Believe me, he's slowing down. 11 errors in the outfield a bit last year. Uh, this year he looks no, no stronger in the outfield. Looks, as a matter of fact, quite a bit shakier. He's not swinging the bat as, as he used to. Big issue there with Vladdy. I believe he's slowing down. And I think this is going to bring this team down to number two in the division. Decent starting staff anchored by John Lackey, who we all like. Very, very underrated. Uh, Bartolo Colon, we don't know when this guy's going to pitch. More than likely sometime in July, possibly late June. Irvin Santana, Joe Saunders, a very nice acquisition last year. Young kid. Jared Weaver, we know what he can do, although he's starting the season hurting a little bit. Solid number two. Number three is surprise. I like the, uh, I like, believe it or not, the Seattle Mariners to move up to number three. I think their everyday lineup, anchored by Richie Saxon and Adrian Beltre, two of the hugest, the biggest disappointments in a free agent uh, market a couple of years ago. I think they're finally going to get their stuff together, gentlemen. And I think with Ichiro in the lineup, Jose Guillen, a nice acquisition, if he can keep his head on straight, which is never possible. Hasn't been. Jose Vidro, both a couple of nice lineup additions with some decent bats. The young pitching of Felix Hernandez, who were there, obviously the race. There's no question about that. Even at this tender age, he's going to be their number one pitcher. And the acquisition of the left-hander Horacio Ramirez from the uh, Atlanta Braves is going to help this team a lot. Closer J.J. Putz, he's healthy, allegedly. Even though he was down earlier this spring, now he said he's ready to assume the closer role. If he is ready, this is my surprise team. Third place, big surprise. Number four, Texas. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Eric Gagne, who they were looking at to really open the season, possibly as a closer, unfortunately opens the season uh, on a DL. Akinori Otsuka, 32 saves last year. He is the number four, he is the number uh, number one closer, the closer. Number three starter, Brandon McCarthy, picked up from the White Sox uh, in the major trade during the off season. Has not pitched well in spring. He's number three. Jamie Wright, guys, is number five. Boy, has he been around, too. He's a number five starter. Millwood and Padilla are, are ones and two. I, I don't know. This is not a very strong team, in my opinion. I've got them for the bottom of the heap in the AL West. Okay, Ralph, I got the same teams as you. Basically, you mentioned Rich Hart. Obviously, that's a huge key for the A's, but uh, particularly I'm intrigued by the left side of their infield, Bobby Crosby and Eric Chavez, and how healthy mm-hmm. and how much they contribute this year as well. But I mean, I think the A's still have good stability in that bullpen, which has been a factor for them when they've won this division over the years. The Angels I have for second, they have a lot of starting pitching questions coming into the year. I mean, but Tone Cologne's not going to begin the year healthy. Jared Weaver's not beginning the year healthy. And you mentioned Garrett Anderson having a very good spring. It looks like he's back to have a pretty good year this year, even with Garrett Anderson and having a good year. There's still questions overall in the depth of that lineup. I'm not particularly impressed. The bullpen, as usual, is strong at the end with Shields and K-Rod, but other than that, I mean, I, I just don't see it in terms of the Angels regarding the starting pitching in the lineup. Mariners in third place. I really think Felix Hernandez is going to have an absolutely huge year for Seattle, and uh, the rotation has a little bit of depth, but there's still a team that I think is playing on having Jose Vidro hit third. And then I have uh, the Rangers in the last place. I mean, it's a, as good as the Rangers infield is hitting-wise of Mark Teixeira and Michael Young and Hank Blaylock and so forth. This is a terrible outfield that they have in Texas to go along with a pitching staff that never is very good. And when you got Robinson Tejeda and Jamie Wright expected to be your four and five starters, I don't think the expectation should be very high as all at all. So I have the Rangers in last. Okay, I'm a little bit different here. I've got the Mariners in last place. I know there's some improvements there, but anytime you have Jeff Weaver and uh, Horacio Ramirez on your staff, I'm not high on Ramirez anymore. I didn't uh, really blemish or flourish, I should say. Too many blemishes with the Braves. I have the Rangers in third. I do have the A's in second. The key will be Rich Harden. Uh, despite his last name, he was fragile last year. And I have the Angels Ooh. in first. You like that line, Ralph? I like that. Yeah, that I came up with that last yeah. night. You know, I won't tell you where I was thinking about that I, line. I kind, of, I kind of figured it out, but that's all right. Go okay. Ahead. Okay. So I got the Angels, A's, uh, Rangers, and Mariners. We'll get to the National League coming up after this break. I'm John Beltran with Pat O'Rourke and Major League Baseball analyst Ralph Woodlick on Sports Saturday. This is 1010K SIR. Welcome back. I'm John Beltran with Pat O'Rourke. We continue our Major League Baseball Divisional Prediction Breakdown with our analyst, Ralph Woodlick. Ralph, take it away for the National League East. 
I'm jumping. I'm jumping, guys. Philadelphia Philly bandwagon, number one. Uh, Ryan Howard, NL MVP. Chase Utley, nice, nice second baseman that carries a nice bat. Jimmy Rollins at short. Wes Helms at third. Nice, solid infield. Outfield, a little questionable in a sense. Uh, Pat Burrell, I, you know, you just don't know. if Can, can he actually lift, lift this outfield? Because the outfield does have trouble manufacturing and scoring runs. We're, talk, we're talking about Aaron Rowan, but I like and Shane Victorino. By, by the way, this kid, I think, is a nice young player. I think we're going to see and hear a lot about him. I like this everyday lineup. Not the best in the division, but good enough, in my opinion, uh, to lead this team because I like the starting staff. Freddie Garcia, nice acquisition uh, from the White Sox. Uh, Brett Myers, Cole Hamels, nice young pitcher. Jamie Moore, the ageless one, coming over from uh, Seattle. A nice pitcher, still a nice pitcher. Uh, John Lieber, Adam Eaton. These guys can get the job done, I think. And I'm hoping. I just want to see somebody else. I just want to see someone else on top of that division. I'm taking Philadelphia number one. Tom Gordon, he's got to stay healthy. He's a closer. Got to stay healthy. Got to get the job done. Uh, Tom Gordon, Flash Gordon. He's, he's, he obviously is another one of these keys. I think I might be going out on a limb on this. Taking a look at the Mets, number two. Very solid team. Carlos Beltran, David Wright, Carlos Delgado. I mean, come on, guys. These guys can just hit the heck out of the ball. Paula Duca at catcher. Very, very solid. Jose Valentin. Actually, <laughs> the guy's been around for years and years, still seeming to get the job done. And I've really omitted one of the fine young players in baseball, Jose Reyes, to shorts up. Awesome. But then you take a look at this outfield. Sean Green, Moises Alou, Eric, you know, I really, uh, aside from Carlos Beltran, uh, in my opinion, at, at this point in time, Alou and, and Green are on very, very much on the downside of their careers. And then I take a look at the starting pitching, Tom Glavin. I think he's on the downside of his career. Orlando El Duque Hernandez, how old is this guy? Is he 60, 50, 40, 35, 37? What does it make any difference? I don't know. Anyway, he's the number two pitcher in the rotation simply because Pedro Martinez is out and probably won't be ready until sometime in late July, maybe early August. Will that be too late to resurrect, to lift this team? Uh, out of uh, second place, in my opinion, because I think that's where they will be at that time, or possibly third, because Atlanta's coming on. Atlanta might be a little bit stronger. But I do like uh, the Mets, number two, Atlanta, number three. I think uh, Atlanta's got a situation at first base. Scott Thorman at first base replacing Adam LaRoche, who had a nice bat last year. Marcus Giles, who did not have a good bat last year. He's gone. Kelly Johnson. What do we know about Kelly Johnson? Not a whole lot at second base. Chipper Jones, can he be stay healthy? I don't think so. He has the last several years. He's had nothing but problems, and I don't see a, a, a healthy a Chipper Jones future in, in 2007. Take a look at the pitching staff. Anchored, again, we talk about ageless ones. John Smoltz has thrown a lot of pitchers with that right arm of his, and we know he's had trouble over the years. I'm not wishing anything on this guy. I wish him the best of health, but still very definitely a question mark. Mike Hampton is already out, guys. I mean, this is unbelievable. Strained rib muscle, out for several months. What do you do with that? Closer Bob Wickman. Enough said. Okay, so I go to Atlanta number three. Number four, I'm sorry, gentlemen. You know, Florida with a new manager, Freddie Gonzalez, you got to wonder. you got to wonder what this guy can do after the fantastic year the prior management staff did with uh, Joe Girardi and uh, the pitching coach who departed. They're going to be hurting, I think, in my opinion. I think this is going to be hurting them a little bit. Rick Kranitz did a great job as a pitching coach last year. Uh, Anibal, Anibal Sanchez, the no-hit Anibal Sanchez, number three in the, in the rotation. Dontrell Willis, number one. Scott Olson, number two. Then we go to Ricky Nolasco, Sergio Mitre. We'll have to see how they do. They just picked up Jorge Julio uh, from the uh, uh, Arizona Diamondbacks, 15 saves last year, 19 opportunities. He is their closer. Everyday lineup, not bad. Dan Ugla, not bad at all. Mike Jacobs, Miguel Cabrera, one of the fine hitters in baseball. Hanley Ramirez, a nice young prospect. Came on last year, very, very strong. Look for some good numbers from Jeremy Hermida at, at right field. I think he can get the job done as well. I think it's a decent team. I just think uh, they're a little overmatched in this division uh, this year. Washington, maybe the weakest team in baseball. I don't want to say anything more about this team. I'm sorry, guys. Chad Cordero is going to get an awful lot of work out of the bullpen as a closer, and his arm almost fell off last year. That's my NL East. 
Okay, Ralph, starting from the bottom, I don't have need to spend much time on it. The Nationals are unquestionably the worst team in baseball right now. I mean, even one of their better hitters, Nick Johnson, isn't going to be healthy the first month or two of the season. The Marlins I have in fourth place. I mean, they've got young pitching, and obviously they a lot of those guys pitched well last year. question is, do they show more progress this year or do they regress? I mean, it's tough for pitching to stay consistent, particularly when it's young pitching. I think they regress a little bit with that young pitching staff. A guy like Miguel Cabrera, Hanley Ramirez, and Dan Uglet in terms of the foundation for the future, but the Marlins still in fourth place. When you talk about the top three teams in the division. Anyone can have them either which way. I mean, I might be completely wrong in this, and but I'm going to have the Mets in third place, and the reason is I just don't like the pitching to start the year. When you look at I mean, guys like Oliver Perez in that rotation, Pedro Martinez may not be back until July or maybe even after that. That's just the starting pitching is a huge question mark, and even the bullpen in front of Billy Wagner, I'm not particularly sold on. I mean, Aaron Hyman did an okay job last season, but I don't think it's that strong. I think the pitching might catch up to him this year. As outstanding as that lineup is nonetheless. Really tough in terms of these top three teams, but I got the Braves in second place. I wanted to put him in first, but it's just I would have had to expect a huge year from Tim Hudson, and he hasn't delivered that in his first two years in the National League. You mentioned Mike Hampton being hurt. The back end of that rotation is a little soft. I do like what the Braves did with that bullpen, getting a Rafael Soriano and a Mike Gonzalez in front of Bob Wickman. It's a very nice bullpen now in Atlanta as opposed to the previous, like last year, where it was a complete disaster. The lineup also is pretty good. I think Jeff Van Cor is a big year for Atlanta. I like the lineup particularly the two through six hitters, but I have the Braves in second. And the Phillies in first, mainly I like the Freddie Garcia acquisition. It looks like he's going to be able to start the year okay, might be pitch in the fourth or fifth game, but you have him along with Cole Hamels and Brett Myers. You still have depth when you got Jamie Moyer and, and John Lieber. And the bullpen, I th- would like to see a little bit more improvement in front of Tom Gordon, but it seems like every team has questions around their bullpen right now. So I have the Phillies in first place. Okay, I've got the same three through five as Pat does. I have the uh, Nationals fifth, the Marlins fourth, the Mets third. I really don't like their pitching at all. And we saw that last last year in the playoffs and you know if Tom Glavin's going to be their ace I do worry because he could put up 14 15 victories but there's not much after that I do have the Philly second you know until Philadelphia can prove to me remember they were the uh, sexy team to pick like two or three years ago when Larry Bow was still managing and this organization does not know how to win divisions they win 80 some odd games each and every year I know they're improved but they've been improved in years past and still disappointed the Atlanta Braves know how to win divisions John Sherholtz did the job he had to do in the offseason solving the problems in the bullpen. As Pat mentioned, Rafael Soriano, they pick up Mike Gonzalez. I always take pitching over hitting. Scott Thorman is going to do very well at first base. He had some good minor league numbers, and I realize it's a a different league in the majors. And even though there's some young players out there, of course, as you mentioned, Ralph with Kelly Johnson, Ryan Longerhand's only 27 years old. I really like this team, and I'm going to pick the Braves to finish first in the National League East ahead of the Philadelphia Phillies. Let's move on, Ralph, to the National League Central. Tough division, really tough division. Not that it's that, that good, but very so many even evenly matched teams. I'm going to go out on a limb again. Houston Astros number one. Surprise, surprise. Carlos Lee, a hundred million dollar man, six year contract. He's got two problems: living up to that money and keeping the weight off. He looks like he weighs about 350 pounds. The last time I saw a picture of him, he's a big man getting bigger. Someone's got to control Carlos Lee, but I'll tell you, I don't think the opposing National League pitchers can. I think this guy's in for a big season with uh, the Houston Astros anchoring that lineup. Uh, Nice hitters in the lineup. Lance Bergman, Craig Beachow, does he have one more year left? I say yes, very definitely. Morgan Ensberg, can he do something? I say yes, he can. He's got to come back. Chris Burke, who was the object of the Rockies' affection uh, prior to the deal with Jason Jennings, he's the center fielder. We'll see what he can do. Luke Scott. Should have a nice year. That's what I'm looking for. Luke Scott in right field. Roy Oswald, obviously, definitely a candidate for MVP, or not for MVP so much, for the Cy Young Award in the uh, National League this year. I think he, uh, he anchors a decent pitching staff, not a great pitching staff. Jason Jennings, obviously, someone to consider number two in the rotation. Woody Williams. Uh, number three in rotation. Some solid veterans. They can get the job done. Wandy Rodriguez and Matt Albers, they pretty much finish off that rotation. Matt uh, and Brad Lidge, solid closer. We can get his head on straight. I think he will this year. Brad Lidge is the anchor of that bullpen. I like Houston, number one. Followed by number two, it's the heart, gentlemen. It's the heart. It's the Cubs. Believe me. Why? With no Kerry Wood. Why? With no Mark Pryor. But with a positive Carlos Zambrano. Ticket for a solid, solid season. Uh, Ted Lilly, nice acquisition. He cannot hurt the team. He'll do a nice job. Rich Hill came on strong last year. He's a number three. Little question mark with Jason Marquis. How about a major question mark with Jason Marquis? He's number four. 
Number five, Wade Miller, finish off the spring, looked pretty good. Ryan Dempster, the closer role. But you got to love, you got to love that everyday lineup. Alfonso Soriano, Aramis Ramirez, uh, Cesar is doing a nice job at shortstop, Derek Lee. I like this team. I like this team number two in a relatively weaker division, but I think they're number two. St. Louis, number three, gentlemen, this team is old. Really. This team is very old. Jim Edmonds starting center field. had surgery on his right shoulder and on his left foot. It's got to be interesting to see how he handles that left foot and right shoulder. But anyway, it's kind of weird. Scott Sabizio opens the season in right field. Please. That, you know, Encarnacion is hurt. This team, this team's got some problems. David Eckstein, how many are, how many throws is this guy going to make deep from the hole again? I mean, he's, he's basically one hopping the ball to first base now. Anchored, anchored by, again, a man who's probably going to be really up in the top Top of one, two, or three in the NL MVP race, Albert Pujols. But aside from Albert Pujols and a very usually unhealthy Scott Rowland, I don't see a whole lot of bat strength coming out of this team. Love Chris Carpenter, number one in the rotation. Like uh, Anthony Reyes, number two. Had a nice uh, uh, postseason last year, as we well know. Adam Wainwright, can he make the move to starter? They really loved him in the bullpen last year. Braden Looper, is he a starter? We'll have to see. Kip Wells, come on, guys, give me a break. And Jason Isringhausen, is he going to be healthy at closer? I think this team got some problems. I think they dump. Defending world champions, I think they dropped to three. Number four, Milwaukee Brewers, a team I think has got some strength, and no question about that. They had a Jeff Supan, a hero in last year's uh, postseason. Um, big money, he's going to obviously help this team. Ben Sheets, is he healthy? Big, big question. Is he healthy at the start of this rotation? He's number one. A nice bullpen, Francisco Cordero. Descends, who had just picked up in a deal. Turnbow. Can he get the ball over the, can he locate the pitch? That's a good question. Infield, a lot of problems. A lot of problems with defense. Ricky Weeks still has not, not made a good, solid, in my opinion, contribution to the defense. Prince Fielder, he just can't bend down, guys. Anything on the ground, good luck. Right fielder's picking up the ball the next time you see it. This is a team that's got some problems, but they also have some strengths. I like this team, but not right now. Maybe next year. Cincinnati, number five. Not a whole lot to say about them. Their closer is Dustin Hermanson. I think that's sufficient. Number six, Pittsburgh Pirates. Again, this is a team that looks looks like the Washington Nationals. I mean, another team that's got so many issues, so many problems. Freddie Sanchez uh, led the league in hitting last year. Where's he going to end up? Where's he going to play? We don't even know if he's going to play second. He opens the season probably on a DL. All sorts of problems on this team. Jason Bay, a nice young kid. He's not going to be young forever, guys. Nobody is. But, I mean, this guy is always a tough out. But I think he's going to get tired of playing a very, very weak Pittsburgh Pirate franchise. Pat, I'm quite a bit different in the National League Central. I was burned by him last year, but I'm taking him again this year. The Milwaukee Brewers were first place in the National League Central. I mean, with the Supon edition, and I was never a big Jeff Supon guy, but obviously he stepped it up yep. the last couple of years, particularly in the postseason last year as well. I think that rotation is very deep with Supon. I mean, of course, they got your guy Chris Capuano, and they would need a, a nice, healthy season from Ben Sheets, but I do like the Brewers team, and I like the back end of that bullpen. I mean, when you have, I think Derek Turnbow has had a really nice sprain. He needs to cut down his walks. He was terrible if the walks last last year, but Francisco Cordero is, is pretty automatic, I think, as a closer for Milwaukee, and I like the back end of that blue bullpen. I think Prince Fielder is a guy they need to have a really big season, but uh, because he needs to continue to develop as a hitter, but I like the Brewers in first place. I have the Cardinals in second, and they are the defending world champions. I mean, they, again, their questions here, they lost a lot of their rotation and to free agency. Will Adam Wainwright and Braden Looper, you mentioned, step into starting roles and do a good job? I happen to think Wainwright is going to be really good. I think Looper will be okay, but to Overall, it takes away depth from their bullpen. I mean, they have Isringhausen, who's already a big question mark last year. Now their bullpen is even a, a bigger question mark in St. Louis. Third place, uh, tough going back and forth, but I'm going to take the Astros for third. I mean, they do have a nice top three to the rotation of Oswalt Jennings and Woody Williams. But uh, the depth after the after Lance Berkman and Carlos Lee, unless Morgan Ensberg has a big year, I don't really like the overall depth, but I have them in third place just because I think their pitching is a little bit better than the Cubs. And uh, Jason Marquis being in that rotation all year long should guarantee the Cubs at least 20 20, 25 losses when he's on the mound. And I think overall, the, the rotation depth for Chicago is not very good after Carlos Zimbrano. They're going to need Rich Hill to have a really nice season. And the bullpen still a question mark. It's been a huge problem for Chicago over the last few years. I have the Cubs in fourth. They mentioned the Reds. I mean, they don't have much stability in terms of their pitching staff either. And if the Reds are going to do anything, they're going to need their top prospect, Homer Bailey, to step up and just set the world on fire. Otherwise, they're just going to have a decent offense with 
pitching staff that doesn't have a lot of depth after Aaron Horain and Bronson Royal, and I have the Pirates in, in last in this particular division. Pittsburgh's not a bad team, and there isn't a whole lot that separates them between them and the Reds and maybe even the Cubs, but they have the Pirates in last in the Central. Okay, we do agree on one thing for sure. The Pirates in sixth place in the National League Central. and fifth, I have the Brewers. I still don't understand uh, all the hoopla with the Brewers. I mean, Pat did make his points, but the bottom line is that this franchise still doesn't know how to win, and even though the roster has been improved over the last two years, they're still a bad franchise. Fourth, I have the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, Aaron Harang is at the top of the rotation along with Bronson Arroyo, which is more than Ralph said about the Reds, so I'll move on, Ralph. Uh, third, I have the Chicago Cubs. I would rank them higher, but their pitching is just very, very shaky at this point. Uh, Carlos Zambrano, excellent, but you mentioned Jason Marquis. Uh, Ted Lilly, will he pitch more like Ted or more like Lilly? I think that he'll pitch more like Lilly. Uh, second, I've got the St. Louis Cardinals, and Ralph, I totally agree with you. I'm taking the Houston Astros. They almost won the division last year with Craig Biggio, Morgan Ensberg, Brad Lidge, all having bad years, and now they pick up a Carlos Lee. I realize they lose Andy Pettit, but you've got Jason Jennings in the rotation. I think Roger Clemens is coming back. I really love Houston to win the National League Central. Let's move on, Ralph, and L. West. And L. West, <clears throat> L.A. Dodgers, guys, I think they got the best team in that division, uh, hands down. Uh, t- let's take a look at that rotation. The strength, obviously, this team, Derek Lowe, Jason Smith, Brad Penny, Randy Wolf, Brad Tomko. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Uh, Saito came out of the bullpen last year. Came out of no place. Came out of Japan last year. Anchored a very decent bullpen. Not a very strong bullpen, but a decent bullpen. And, and I, think, I think this team is going to get it done with their starting pitching and the decent bullpen. Uh, basically, the everyday lineup, Nomar garcia Parra can he stay healthy at first base? Jeff Kent, another question mark. Getting old, but Jeff Kent can swing the bat. Ray for Cal did not have the best year, in my opinion, last year after the, after the Braves spent all that money. I think he's going to play fairly well. I think he's uh, pretty solid at shortstop. I think he's going to have a decent season. Luis Gonzalez, question mark, 839 in the left field. You know, guys, he hasn't had more than 80 RBI since 2003. So there's going to be an issue there. They're going to have to watch that. Can, see, can, can they get any production out of uh, Luis Gonzalez? J.D. Drew, they lost, obviously. Uh, not that he was all that great, but again, he, at least he was uh, healthy for the most part of the season last year. And I think he is, I think Gonzalez and, and Drew is pretty much of a wash. Andre Athier, I thought he had a fabulous year last year. I think he's going to help the team big time this year in a full, uh, full role. And Juan Pierre, the center fielder, stolen base. King, no question about it. The man can get on base. I don't like his arm. I never have, never will. This is a solid team, in my opinion, in, the, in, a, in a strange a very strange division, simply because who's, what teams are two, three, four, and five? <laughs> I like San Diego number two. Don't ask me why. They've got some. They've got some real problems, no doubt about that. Greg Maddox at age forty-one in two weeks. David Wells at the bottom of the rotation at age forty-two. Will be age forty-three by the end of the season. But I like Jake Peavy and Chris Young as, as pitchers number one and two. I love their bullpen. Trevor Hoffman, Scott Linderbrink, and Clyde Meredith. These guys that can really get the get the job done, get the side out and put that big W up on the board for the Padres. Everyday lineup is okay. Nothing really to write home about. Kevin Kuzminoff has to get the job done at third base. They paid a lot for him. Josh Barfield going, obviously, to Cleveland. Josh Barfield, I should say. Jamel Sledge, you like him a lot. Had a nice spring, guys. We'll have to see what he can do coming over from Washington uh, slash Montreal uh, in the last couple of years. Mike Cameron, center field. Brian Giles, right field, decent. These guys have lost an awful lot in the last couple of years. Surprise, guys. Here it is, Colorado Rockies, number three. Wow, we're going to talk a lot about them, but I'll tell you, I saw them in spring training sufficiently to believe I think this team is going to be stronger than last year. I like Aaron Cook at number one. I look, This guy had a fabulous spring. He looked terrific. Looks like he's ready to go, number one. Jeff Francis, wow, what can I say? This guy gets the job done. I'm not a big Jeff Francis fan. He wins games, gets batters up. I guess that's what pitching is all about. Rodrigo Lopez, real problem. Jason Hirsch, let's see what he has. Josh Fogg and Brian Lawrence, that's the way I look at it. Brian Lawrence will, will, prediction, will make this team in the rotation come mid-May. He will be there, and he will get the job done for them in the number three, four, or five spot in the rotation. But I know I'm jumping, but that's where I'm taking, putting the Colorado Rockies, number three in LOS. Number four, Arizona Diamondbacks. Solid rotation, Brandon Webb, Randy Johnson, I believe he's healthy, guys. Levon Hernandez, is he ready for another 200-plus inning year? They're going to have to get that from him. Doug Davis had a very, very bad spring. Uh, he's in a number four role. Number five role, they got two Gonzalez guys, Enrique and Edgar. One of the two is going to assume the role of number five. At the stands right now, it's Enrique, but it could be Edgar. 
It could be Edgar tomorrow. It could be Enrique the following day. Uh, Jose Valverde is a closer. Brandon Lyons still there. Could If he stays healthy, could help the bullpen. Every lineup very, very young, very, very talented. Connor Jackson at first base. Stephen Drew at shortstop. Chris Young in center field, a very nice, very nice prospect. Right field, Carlos Quentin. A lot of young kids, a lot of good talent. But, again, it's a long season, and it could be a, a very much growth year for these guys. That's why I'm looking at number four for them. Number five, golly, I hate to say this, Pat, but San Francisco, you know, gentlemen, their strength, obviously, and there's nothing wrong with having strength in your starting staff because that's where the strength is. Because Barry Zito, Matt Cain, Matt Morris, Noah Lowry, Russ Ortiz, who, by the way, is going to do very, very well with the San Francisco Giants the second time around. Not that he did poorly the first time around, but then we know we had some hardships after he left the Giants. He will be a solid, solid number five. Closer, Armando Benitez, problem, problem, problem. Everyday lineup, it's old, but what else is new? This team has always been old, and, you know, it doesn't get any younger. Where do we go? Rich Aurelio, first base. Omar Vizquel, still a great club at, at shortstop. Barry Bonds, ah, yes, Barry Bonds. Ryan Klesko carrying his, his, his glove because another left-handed bat, and he's the caddy. Dave Roberts in center, Randy Wynn in right. Not a great lineup. They've got the lead-footed Benji Molina at catcher. A decent team in a decent division, but someone's got to finish last. I say San Francisco. Okay, Ralph, I'm going to put the Rockies in last place. I, mean, I think they may have the best lineup in the division, but I think they also have the worst pitching it. staff. I mean, so the, pitching, the pitching staff is terrible, and that's why I have the Rockies in last place. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, I agree with you in terms of Brian Lawrence. He should be in that rotation right now. That's my problem is that he should be in that rotation right now. Ubaldo Jimenez should be in that rotation right now. But for whatever reason, they've got guys like Rodrigo Lopez in there as well to start the season. So that's my issue with the Rockies. You know what? I'm not going to put a whole lot of st- in terms of Arizona because their players are so young. I mean, you got Chris yeah. Young, Stephen Drew, Carlos Quinton, Connor Jackson. I mean, I just think these young players, they, they either have a really good rookie year and then a bad second year or it's the yeah. other way around. And I think that's just they're too young. I like the rotation. I mean, they they have an inning, innings-eating rotation, but the back end of the bullpen is still going to be an issue in Arizona. They're going to blow a lot of games, whether it's Valverde or whoever in, at the back end of that bullpen. Yeah. Giants in third place. I mean, I agree. The lineup is old. They still have major questions in the bullpen. If the Giants are going to win this division, they're going to have to have an absolutely great year out of their – entire pitching staff. They have a lot of potential there, but they would have to have a great year from a number of players that haven't particularly given them a great year in the past. Padres in second because I like the back end. The bullpen still with line break and hopping. I think that's been a big key for them, why they've been able to surprise people and win divisions the last couple of years. I'm still not impressed with them. Not much of a lineup. They're counting an awful lot on Termel Sledge and Kevin Kuzminoff, but I mean, I think the Padres overall, in terms of the pitching, should help them in a second because the starting rotation is very good. And unfortunately, I have to put the Dodgers in first. I mean, but the fact remains that all these teams in this division have particular weaknesses, and the Dodgers don't have a great strengths, but they don't have any big glaring weaknesses either. Okay, in fifth place, I have Arizona. I think that the Rockies of two years ago may be just a little bit better because they're extremely young. I, I'm not high on Randy Johnson coming back whatsoever. I know they have an excellent ace in Brandon Webb. In fourth, I do have the Rockies. They were 76 and 86 a year ago. They're better in some respects, but I think they're going to be 76 and 86 again because I don't like the starting rotation, three through five. The bullpen is still a little bit of a question mark. And of course, you do have the solid closer in Brian Fuentes. In third, I have the Giants simply because of the starting uh, pitching. That's it. I mean, the Giants, to me, if they were uh, strong with the uh, lineup and weak with the pitching, I'd have them lower, but it's the opposite. Second, I have the L.A. Dodgers. I'm going to take the San Diego Padres to win this division. I had the Dodgers just uh, up until last night, but San Diego won the division last year with only one 300 hitter, and you had Woody Williams in that rotation. Now you bring in Greg Maddox. He can win more than 11 or 12 games. I think San Diego's a better team this year. Vinny Castilla's not the starting third baseman, so I'm taking San Diego, followed by the Dodgers, the Giants, the Rockies, and the Diamondbacks in the National League West. Ralph, recap your division winners, your wild card team, and who's going to the World Series and your World Series champion. AL, East, Yankees, Central, Detroit, West, Oakland. Wild card, the Bo Sox, Boston Red Sox. National League, East, Philly, Central, Houston, West, Dodgers. Wild card, Mets. Who's going to the World Series? I hate to say this, guys. World, Subway World Series, Mets and the Yankees. And who's winning it? I got the Yankees. <laughs> I've got the Yankees winning the World Series, the whole thing. I mean, like I say, I'm, I'm just, I'm just tired of putting these guys up there, but, <laughs> but I just put them up there. 
Pat O'Rourke. Okay, in the American League, my division winners are the Red Sox in the East, the Indians in the Central, and the A's in the West. And my wild card team going back and forth in this one between the Yankees and the Tigers, but I do end up picking the Yankees as the wild card I gave in there. In the National League, my division winners are the Phillies in the East, the Brewers in the Central, and the Dodgers in the West. And the wild card team is the Braves in the East. And in the World Series, I mean, John Scherholz has done a nice job in terms of building a team built for the postseason. I think the Braves, with that back in the bullpen, is going to get them to the World Series again, but I have the Red Sox beating the Braves in the World Series. Okay, the American League, I have the Yankees, and to win their division, the Twins and the Angels, I have the Tigers as the wild card team, and in the National League, I've got the Braves to win the East, along with the Astros in the Central, in the West, I've got the Padres, the wild card team, the Phillies, going to the World Series, I have the Yankees and the Astros, with Roger Clemens facing his former Yankee team, and the Astros winning the World Series. So that's now, what you just heard. You just heard me say, "Ah, yeah, I know." I'm telling you, the wild card, the true wild card gentleman in the major leagues this year is Roger Clemens. Where yeah, will he end? Without up? a doubt, without a doubt. If he goes to the Astros, they can win it. Okay. If he goes to the Yankees, they can win. He goes to the Bull Sox, they nope, can win it. Roger Clemens is the wild card. Absolutely. Okay. We'll have a show on Monday, ten ten preps and more from uh, one to one thirty because the Rockies open up against the uh, Arizona Diamondbacks. Ralph will be with us right at one o'clock, and we'll have our MVP Cy Young predictions. Brush B Digger Baseball. 10.30 this morning. For Ralph Woodlick and Pat O'Rourke, I'm John Beltran. You've been listening to Sports Saturday on 1010 KSIR, Brush, Fort Morgan, and Windsor. It's 9 o'clock.